This is going to be a video to show you how I make my pads. First of all, I got from Harbor Freight a 5 inch uh, vise. It's called a drill press vise. And the purpose of it is to hold my metal hole punch. Uh, you can get the vise from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight used to carry these, but they evidently did not sell enough of them. And you can get these off of eBay. I found one for $26.77 or something like that. Uh, they can go up to whatever, 60 bucks. I don't know anybody that pays $60 for this thing. And if, if you go to Amazon, they start at 33 something and up. Now, I've got it in the vise because we're going to use a lot of pressure. Uh, a couple other tricks here is I used a bandsaw and I cut a 2 by 4 a piece of it, to make this little, um, it's a stop kind of thing because when I lift the arm up and push down, it exerts a lot of pressure and the torque will cause this thing to rotate. There's no way you can get enough pressure using the vise to hold this in place. So put the wood in here and there's a wedge. Whoops. There's a wedge here, which I hammered in here to really, really lock this in place. And then I use a zip tie because when I pull this up, the board is going to be stuck or held by the punch and you have to pull it all the way up to release the board. I'll show you. Then the pads, the pads are going to come out of the punch and fall onto the floor or your desk. But I used a little, you know, the little plastic covers that come on anything you buy at the store. Um, you throw those away or recycle them, but save one of them. And I used the painter's tape to hold it in place and then lend a little wood piece of wood here to hold, you know, keep it, keep the bottom of it up. And then when I fill this up, I'll just pull the tape off and go put it in a pill bottle to uh, store it. Material I use for punches is composite epoxy material, dash one, has a thickness of 060 inches or 1.5 millimeters. Get this from ABC Fab and the pay first web page on the Manhattan Circuit Construction Madness course uh, gives you a link to it. Uh, this packet I think came with 15. The owner, here's his card, the owner was in New Hampshire but I, I think he's moved to Florida. Anyway, ABC Fab. Also uh, on the webpage I showed you this little mod here where I put a little put a little piece of wood and taped it in place. And what this is, is this is stop. This is a stop. So when I put the board into the punch, it's going to stop it so that the punch, the back end of the hole is one millimeter from the edge. And that'll kind of minimize waste. So I'm going to start at the end here and I'm going to push down and it's going to punch the hole. Pops through. Then when you pull it up, see the board come up? The board pulls it up and I pull a little further to pop it loose. Whoops, my, my tie broke. So now I have to, I'm going to have to fix that. Now you don't see any, you don't see any pad come out. Well, the first few of these that you punch are going to be stuck in the throw to this die so you know you can get them out later but okay so let's go do a go do another one I don't 
don't have my glasses on. There's three, four, five. So you can see it, that I punch them out in a row. And you can see some of the pads here. Let's see if I can get one. Now the reason why I got the gloves on is so you don't see my dirty hands or any cuts, bruises, or ugly imperfections. So these pads come out and they're very nice. And I use a, a two millimeter diameter. You pick one. Also, another thing about the the punch, they come on the tip. There's a little pointy thing. And the reason for the pointy thing is that when the punch goes down on the metal, the little pointy thing digs into it so that when whatever you do, it doesn't move laterally. Um, I don't want to dent or uh, valley in my pads, so I file that off. When you file it off, make sure that you file only the, the point off and you leave the tool flat. Any imperfections in it will show up in the top, but you're gonna solder plate it so it doesn't matter. It's just a nit thing. I'm gonna go off here, and what I do is I go all the way around the edge, go around all, along all this edge, go around, go around all four edges to make the first group of pads. Then I go to my shear. Uh, it, you don't want to spend $150 on a shear, so you're going to have to find a technique using um, a paper cutter or a tin snips, some, some way to cut that off. Sorry, it's not easy. There's always more ways to spend money, but it's a hobby. You're not going to take it with you, so let's let's spend some money. Okay, I'm going to stop the video. Let me go off and do a bunch of these and show you what the results are. Okay, after a little work, I was able to punch 112 pads. That's, that's, that's enough to get started with, and we'll do some more as we go along. Here's what the board looks like. Let me get the reflection off it. Whoops. LED bar lamp. Pretty shiny. This is what the board looks like. Go all the way around. Every once in a while, I get in a hurry, and I may, may have one that's kind of like a phase of the moon. Part of it's cut out. You can use it, because it doesn't matter, or you can just toss it. Now, I'm going to have you uh, practice taking some pads before you start building and glue them to a board to see what that process is. Whatever scrap you get out of this thing, you can uh, use to uh, practice on. Also, I'm going to use FR4 board, flame retardant 4 board for building projects on, but you can use this stuff as a base for a Manhattan project. So out of those 16 boards, if you don't want to get the FR4, that's fine. Uh, this stuff works just as good. And uh, I'll probably do on the first project, let's do it on a CM1. It doesn't matter. What's on the other side of the board doesn't matter because you got a Faraday shield effect, which means that you don't have to worry about it. Now, I prefer circular pads. When Jim Kirchy, K8IQY, won the 2M22 building contest at four days in May in 1997, he used a nibbler to make rectangular pads. On the web page, I gave you a link to Paul Harden in a 5N document where he used a nibbler. I didn't like the nibbler because what it does to cut to cut the board, 
it's slanted so it uses sheer uh, force to cut the board and as it goes along it warps the board so I found that my little rectangular pads were warped and I didn't care for that these little pads are just fine and they're fast to make they're, every one of them's alike if you don't cut one in half and now some of you are going to be nits and going to worry about capacitive effects one of these little things and we will measure it I'll show you how to measure it is only about one picofarad uh, capacitance from your pad to ground and that's not enough to worry about ever because you've got more larger uh, capacitive values other places in your circuit and we're only going to go up to 28 megahertz we could go to 50 i've never been above 28 so might be a new experience but that's for later so this will get you started make some pads and then we're going to build something